Hello and welcome to the USA Volleyball Show, the official podcast of USA Volleyball. My name is Steven Munson and of course, as always, joined by my co-host Clarence Hughes. Clarence, how are you doing today? I am cold. Not necessarily right now, but it is snowing outside. First time in Omaha, Nebraska, having a great time. But yeah, not a fan of the snow. And we're not alone. No, we're not. We're not alone. We have a special guest joining us, Tama Miyashiro, U.S. Women's National Team Assistant Coach. Tama, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Also cold, being that I grew up in Hawaii, but I'm good. We're inside. Uh, volleyball is everywhere. We're even by table volleyball. Um, a lot of coaches just walking around trying to get better. So, Yeah, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm used to being in gyms and stuff, so I'm trying to like keep my head on a swivel. Yep. Uh, there are demonstrations going on, so we might get some balls flying at us. But uh, uh, that's the best part about this event. It'll like add to the aesthetic, yeah. you know. Just yeah, yeah. Volleyball. yeah. Ouch, I just got hit in the head while we're trying to record this <laughs> podcast. If it happens, it happens. You, guys. Okay. you know? Yes. Yep. Uh, Tama, yeah. we're here at ABCA, the American Coaches Volleyball Association Convention. NCAA championships are going on. We'll talk a little bit about that maybe and, and the semifinals last night. But what do you love – about this event? What excites you about being here at this event? Um, well, the first thing is, this is our off season. So this is a really cool opportunity to connect with other coaches, um, to do a little bit of teaching and sharing, I should say, sharing, more sharing. Um, and then just, I don't know, get into the community and share with everyone what we've been up to, what we're looking forward to. Uh, then there's these college players that are just getting after it and working hard, playing hard for a national championship. And then, you know, they also have some high school events too. So yeah. it, it's kind of bringing together the entire volleyball world, which is super fun for us. And um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little antisocial. So sometimes <laughs> it's a lot for me, but it's really fun. And yeah. um, I mean, I think this is the most USA Volleyball people we've had. Yeah, it is. At the, yeah. the convention. I and so the biggest that, USA Volleyball presence we've had. Yeah. yeah. So that's really, I don't know, it's awesome after, I think this is my third one. So. Okay. Third one? Yeah. It's our yeah. first one. First one, we had a long yeah. drive up here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, very drove. interesting drive there too, but it's been a lot to take in. So definitely yep. hear what you're saying there. And, you know, just kind of seeing you and Aaron do your things uh, at every demo, every demonstration, every talk. It's, it's a lot, especially with you saying how uh, antisocial you are. Couldn't <laughs> tell. Wouldn't be able to tell there. But what's been like, what's been the most memorable part uh, of this for you? so far um did you say of the convention Sorry. correct yeah, yeah um you know aaron virtue and i we opened up the convention um and we talked about athlete collaboration and we talked about feedback and how we can include our athletes in that process and how important it is and uh i guess the biggest piece of feedback that I got personally was just to share some of the things that we're working on, other coaches are also working on. And so when they can see us at our level trying to work on the same thing, um, I think they just found some connection there. And I think that's the whole reason why we're all here is to find ways to get better, to connect. And so that was really cool. A coach came up to me and, and just said, hey, it, it was awesome to hear that you're also working on that and we are too. So that was a, you know, you don't really know because when you're in the session, they, they kind of just look at you. And yeah, so you don't yeah. really know. <laughs> and so for, you know, people that sit in those and they got like just one thing out of it, that's, I mean, that's why we, we're here. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, speaking of cool experiences, uh, last night were the semifinals of the NCAA and the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic coaches, including yourself, uh, uh, were recognized on court. Uh, for your achievements in Tokyo, winning gold medals. Um, I guess, could you talk a little bit about um, what that meant to just be recognized on the court last night and then especially just being recognized side by side, the women's indoor team and the women's sitting team too? Yeah, it, it was awesome. I think we got the request maybe a week or, or a couple of weeks. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, for us, just to get to that point was such a big deal. It was you know a lot of work obviously something that we talked about as a program and you know it, i mean it's a little dark but we've we've gone through a lot of suffering and i think when you want to do really big things uh karch has 
shared some of that, you know, just that insight of this program has done so many really good things, but we've also suffered a lot. We've been really close is kind of how we describe it. And so to finally win that, um, that was a whole thing in itself and, you know, hard to describe in words. And then you come back to the States and people just love the Olympics, you know, their, their feelings and their emotions and like the hype around the Olympics yeah, yeah. is so big. And, and, you know, we play abroad a lot and, and to some extent they care a lot more about, let's say European championships. Cause it's also a tough competition, but yeah. I really do feel like Americans love the Olympics. So to get recognized, you know, here and, and just considering like the last convention, it was one of those things where it's like, we were just happy to have it happen. And so, you know, there was a ton of people and um, to be recognized for sure, it's it's great. And, and we all came from that college world. So to, I don't know, bring it all together was amazing. And then of course, you know, like I said, we have so many USA Volleyball people here. Yeah. You know, we, we sit in our seats and there's the beach coordinator, the beach managers, who also are doing like amazing things and then the sitting team and then we get recognized. So it's uh, it's pretty cool to bring all these worlds together because that doesn't always happen. So I think that was the really cool thing. And um, it made me pause a little bit before we even went on the court. Like USA Volleyball is working hard to get better, but we've done a lot of really cool things in the last couple of years and even year. So. Yeah, I um I feel like I got a little bit of a glimpse into the suffering that you that you were talking about um, with just being at the uh, the dinner in Shreveport, the celebration dinner mm, yeah, yeah, that yeah. you guys had. And um, I'm not I'm sh not sharing any stories or any specific names, but just to see, uh, you know, all those athletes go up there, coaches go up there and, and talk and you could just see the emotions. Uh, the, and there are a lot of emotions, some crying, uh, some inside stories being told. Um, but it just um i don't know it kind of took me back to to that moment in tokyo and jordan larson put that ball down and just what that meant to the program mm -hmm. uh to win that first gold medal for the program and you've been a part of that program for a long time too both as an athlete and a coach um mm -hmm. so i guess just really quickly could you just talk about the uh what you felt um for those athletes who won gold in tokyo yeah it's um it's pretty, yeah, it's really cool. And, and just to give you all some context who are listening to this after, Daniel Scott just walked by yep, us yep. <laughs> doing an her, interview yeah. and talk about being with USA Volleyball. Um, so, yeah, I think when you're there as a coach and as a player, you're so focused on the task at hand. And so you are you have this hyper focus where you put all, you know, you put in this time and you want to seek that reward and you want the people around you to also and I think that was like maybe the biggest thing I felt as a coach is I want also obviously this program but these girls to see where they were just a year before that and uh, you know two years before that at world championships when we didn't finish where we wanted to and so to see the team put in this work you know with COVID doing work separately you know we we come together to play volleyball, to be part of this really great team sport. And yet here we are in all these different parts of the world trying to get better ourselves to help our program get better. And you, you don't really know until you get tested, right? So right. Yeah. It, it all just comes kind of crashing at one point. And it was, yeah, I, I still remember. I, I don't think I'll ever forget that, that swing you're talking about because it, it was more than just this one match against Brazil. And it was just... It was more than just the Olympic Games. It, it was a lot of work and time and, and even the alumni before us who, you know, helped pave the way. And I'm so fortunate. I know a lot of them and to see and feel how proud they were for us. Um, that that just made it way better and super cool. And yeah. Do you remember the do you remember what the energy around the team was like going into that gold medal match like any any you know any specific nerves or was everybody just business-minded oriented just like this is a business trip we we, we know we want to do what we need to do what was that energy energy like going into that gold medal match yeah it was it was pretty cool because 
we were so focused on what we were doing and of course we lost that russia match early so we were you, you just kind of dial things back in and you don't question what you've done but you try to learn from that one night and it, hey like that's okay we we knew we were going to hit adversity we prep like prepared for that um as best as you can you don't obviously prepare to lose right but you prepare for things to come at you you know with covid we had all these uh delays in and um what is it called when you have to sit out because you didn't you don't have covid but you're by contact tracing contact. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. yeah i try to erase it but so there, <laughs> there was all these elements that we were fighting um while we were there and so i think for us you know like some people bring up how there are no fans and it was actually kind of nice because you get to ultra focus on each other and, and being there and being present so uh interesting twist uh without having fans but it, it kind of worked so um yeah it was we were trying to be business but try to enjoy it because we knew it was going to be special so try to stay present and and the girls it was awesome they were just a bunch of i don't think you're allowed to say this in podcasts but just badasses yeah yeah and, no you can say and, it you can yeah say it. <laughs> so um it, you, as a coach and even someone that was prepping for a final before it was it was cool to see the girls go about what they were doing mm-hmm. yeah and how, how did they prep for that as well? Like, you know, you, you mentioned uh, a lot of unique circumstances mm-hmm. in, in play here, you know, no fans, contact tracing, all that. How did the team continue to prepare for that moment? Like, what are some things that, you know, you want to kind of point out and, and identify? Yeah, it's, it's so fascinating, right? Because when you play on, like, high-performing teams and you work with just elite thinkers, um, one, we talk about taking it day by day and, we talk about taking care of what's right in front of us and staying present. And then uh, Karch talks about having low expectations and high hopes. And, you know, there's a lot of people that have high expectations because like, yeah, I, I, I did all the work. I should get my reward. And so we, we try to make it clear that if we go in with low expectations, we're going to work a little bit harder probably. And we're, we're just ready for all that. And so with that current climate, I mean, I remember taking that COVID test to get there. I mean, I'm sure you remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was so nerve wracking. And I'm like, just I've getting seen on the, the same 20 people. All the paperwork and everything we had to have in order to like yeah. even get on the plane. And I was so nervous I forgot something. <laughs> I, yeah. 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 And so if you, I don't know, like those of you who have taken COVID tests, like imagine you swabbing your nose and being like, as long as I don't have COVID, I can go to the Olympics and like not really, you know, you're like, man, I went to the grocery store to get some bread and like, I don't know who I talked to. Yeah. And yeah. so just that alone. And, and so you just take it like event by event. And then, you know, we get there and we had some contact tracing, tracing issues, other teams did. And so we knew we like, we actually started making some backup plans ahead of time and we said hey what could go wrong or not as planned and what are we going to do about it so that was a pretty scary like process yeah. if you think about it yeah but that was like that was that time you know everyone had backup plans and then you go from there and you adjust and you um you like either step up and you solve the problems or you let it kind of own you and own your space and your uh like mindset so it it was tough it was it was very unique and i think like anyone that was trying to play sports then it's yeah it's a whole thing but um tough but it it was a pretty cool experience yeah looking ahead to this season what are you as a coach on the national team what are you what are you focusing on what what is the staff focusing on moving uh, moving ahead to looking ahead to 2024 Mm mm-hmm yeah so you know with a shortened kind of compressed quad um you know you have a couple of things that you, you just always have to think about first our girls go and play abroad and they are playing for other coaches they're playing in other countries they're you know not seeing their family they're um trying to get better in a different system of volleyball right they're trying to play for champions league championships so there's all these things and that's normal for us 
Um, and then you have us. We're in Anaheim in her office. We're on Zoom. We're on Volumetrics. We're watching them play live. We're, you know, trying to keep up with all the teams. And you're just trying to keep some connection going. And so what we're finding is, hey, there's only so many months away from Paris. And, and like, even if you back that up, we're just we're qualifying this year, this coming year. And that's our big goal. And so, you know, how do we break that up? to like not make it so overwhelming because when you think about all of that it's so overwhelming you know so we try to kind of you know compartmentalize uh take it day by day month by month let's get some plans in place let's keep the connections tight and strong let's be a good support system um and you know a, a lot of that is us doing a little bit of lonely work in anaheim and then um they're all gonna come back in may and or april and may and june and you know we all get so excited to see each other and, and just kind of get after it so yeah, yeah yeah this is a lot of tokyo talk a lot of uh just it's an interesting point of view like you know really coming from you and your you know coaching perspective and just you don't really think about these things though until like you're in those situations like you know you and steven had the you know the the privilege of you know going and you, know, you talk about the COVID test you took you talk about just just literally one small decision just affects literally that entire experience for you and like the nerves that are associated with that but let's let's dial it back a little bit let's you know yeah. just let's, let's shelf that and <laughs> you know just talk about you know the game of volleyball as a whole and this is something that we always you know ask all of our guests here and Heads up there. That, hey, there, there's, there's a ball. ball. There's there a ball. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You're, you're fine. All cords. good. <laughs> it's part of the game. <laughs> you're good. But yeah, how, how were you introduced to the game of volleyball? Everybody has that unique story, that unique journey. How did that start for you? Well, that's a good question. Uh, okay, so I grew up in a volleyball family. My mom played at the University of Hawaii. My sister played at the uni University of Hawaii. I had a cousin that played at the University of Hawaii, <laughs> but so I at the University of Hawaii. No, <laughs> went to Washington. But anyway, um, but I grew up in this family that loved sports. Uh, we always had volleyball around. And so I would kind of go to like my sister's practices, I think, and, and just like hit the ball against the wall by myself. And then when my brother, I had a brother, uh, not had, I have a brother one year older than me. We would pepper. And so, you know, just surrounded. I played my first club team at like nine years old. I mean, didn't oh, really wow. play. It was just like, yeah. I just like my mom coached so I could hang out, you know, one of those things. So I started really, really young and for sure family. And I mean, let's be honest, Hawaiians love volleyball, right? Yep. So it's like not super surprising. No but secret, right? Yeah, <laughs> no secret. Um, so yeah, definitely family. And then I actually started playing soccer first. Oh, okay. Play basketball. My mom put me in baseball. It was not that fun, but I, I survived. I mean, it's nice, right? You learn how to throw really good. So mm -hmm, <laughs> that's probably yeah. important. And then a little bit of tennis. I started like maybe let's call it organized volleyball last, but I liked it the most. I think at some point when I got to eighth grade, I realized I didn't like running that much. So soccer, I stopped playing soccer and then I actually played basketball all throughout high school until my senior year of high school. So okay. I was about um, to ask you, what, what haven't you played? It's like you've done it all. <laughs> I know, right? A lot I of know. cross training there. A lot yeah. of cross training. <laughs> I feel like maybe water sports are like the yeah. one that I'm like, yeah. no, I like the beach, but not to be athletic or not that much yeah not that much <laughs> if there was a so you love volleyball but if there was a sport that you could play that you just like admire so much maybe or admire the athleticism in that sport what would you want to be an athlete in uh so i think tennis tennis okay really yeah i don't know there's something about tennis the hard part is you got to play with someone but um i like watching it mm -hmm. uh not i'm not like a super fan of anyone but i like when it's on i like watching to see how i think what's intriguing to me is how people move yeah and yeah. like how are they going to cover so much court and what's their strategy and like i try to see if i can pick up on their strategy um without knowing too much about the actual sport so i think it's really fascinating so 
That would be one sport I think that I would try and like. What got you into coaching? Like, what was that click for you when you were like, I, I want to become a coach? Yeah. Uh, okay. So when I was in, well, let's back it up. Yeah. My parents are coaches. Okay. So I was kind of all always around um, athletics, obviously. But when I was in college, I thought, oh, you know, these, you know, three coaches at the time at Washington, these three people, humans, were so impactful to me. Like, if I could do that for someone else, that would be mm, pretty cool. Yeah. And so, for sure, it started with them and um, seeing how, how much they impacted my experience. It's like, oh, that could be cool. And then I like finished at Washington and then um, started with the national team. And then all of a sudden, you guys, I was like, wait, do I want to coach? I've been around this game forever. <laughs> yeah, you, know? Right, yeah. you know, you get those moments where you're like, huh, it's, it's kind of a long time. Am I going to become a coach? Yeah. This, am I doing <laughs> Are this? Are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, okay, so I went through this like, I don't know if it was like a year or a couple months, but I was like, ooh, I think I should like join a different world. Mm, yeah. Like go somewhere else, you know? Yeah. And I think that's maybe just a sign of like, hey, you're probably hitting the end of your career mm. um, and, and other things too. But, you know, I, like I said, I started so early, so I'd been around the game for so long. And then I was finishing up playing i hurt my knee like right before i finished playing and i was kind of doing some rehab and then so you know what let me just try coaching to try it i liked teaching people i i think just that skill of being able to teach someone something and like them enjoy it and get better at it i was like oh that's pretty fun so i tried it to say i could try it, and then i really liked it i had some coaching experiences before that were fun some weren't um but yeah so it kind of started there i would say it, it was like wavering a little bit and then um when karch asked me to come on board i think the, the not the selling point but the the one thing that we talked about was that i was like a really good learner and i tried to be as a player and so i knew okay i might not be the best right now but i'll learn fast and i'll try to be the best so um, yeah, a little kind of later, I would say, in my playing career. So what, what was that moment that really hooked you or solidified things, you know, for you, uh, you know, and, and your coaching career? Was it that moment that Karch asked you to be on the team? Did it happen beforehand and say, yes, I, I can do this and I see a future in this? What was that moment for you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say... Once I got to Anaheim, because I was like, let's, you know, retired, right? So I was actually at home in Hawaii. And so I got to Anaheim and started working with Karch on some projects. And I, I think it was then, maybe like a couple weeks into that, where it was seeing the quality of work that we had to do the quality and the details that Karch put into everything that we, you know, we did for the girls or for us or for our staff. I think it was all of that together. And I was like, oh, I one, I like challenge and this is a really challenging job. I like details and Karch is very detail oriented and everything that we do, like all these little things matter. And then volleyball. So I, I think it was maybe a couple of weeks into that. I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is where I want to be and need to be. You maybe uh, touched on it a little bit, but what do you love uh, about coaching specifically the women's national team program? The people, for sure, the, the people, the athletes, our staff, um, people that we bring in our program and that we surround our program with are really awesome and to be able to do um our our strength coach from last squad jimmy stitz we, we used to talk about like hey sign us up let's do hard things with great people yeah. that's i think would sum up like what we're trying to do and you know you can do 
tough things, but if you have some people around you that they care, they're open to getting better, you know, they're they're into it, they and they're like pleasant to be around. It's just so much better. And so I, I think um, specific to our team and, and what's super cool is as a coach you get to meet like other departments like you guys, like the beach um, squads and all that. Like it, there are some really cool people around USA volleyball and I uh, I think we're all, we're all just trying to get a little bit better. So yeah, those are yeah, it's it's been great. So as a as you're into more of the I guess off season portion of things, like you know right now, what are what are some things that you do? I mean, of course we're here at ABCA right now, Final Four, you know, living the dream, you know. So as some <laughs> people would say, what are some other things that you do during this time? You know, it could be coaching focus, it could be you know just kind of resetting for yourself personally. What are some yep. of those things that you do? Uh, some Netflix binging, any any like shows that? you like to watch? <laughs> Update you no know, Spotify question. playlist, you know, yeah, Spotify rap just came out. You know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. I love music. Uh, okay, so I'm so happy you guys asked this question because people ask us all the time what we do. Mm. It's like I think sometimes they think we go on vacation and then we just come back in April. Like, is there an off season? <laughs> so no, yeah, no, we're bit, oh, okay, not in a complaining way, everyone. But she's complaining. So the the awesome thing is this is a time for us to kind of one reevaluate, right? Like well, let's just say evaluate the season. Let's look at areas to improve on the court, off the court. Uh, let's individually get better. So um, we actually uniquely are, I'm in a master's program. Oh, cool. In sport coaching. Oh, awesome. So I, I thought it'd be, I'd learn a, a lot there. And um, my, my thought process behind it was there's going to be some foundational coaching themes and classes and ideas that I missed because I went straight from playing to coaching. And so you obviously I have my experience, uh, but I thought that this could just help me be better. And so our team or our staff, I should say, you know, they're meeting with experts, they're reading books, they're reading articles, they're talking to other coaches. We're studying video from the men's game. We're talking to our men's staff. Uh, we're just constantly trying to push the the limit and the envelope of like, how can we be better as people, as coaches, and then you know ultimately help our team. So that's a that's a big component of it. Um, keeping up with the college game is huge for us because like exact like for example this year we were at World Championships in most of the college season so we've got to keep up with all the athletes that we know of already and the ones that could potentially uh come to our team we've got to stay in touch with staff and then we've got to like keep in touch with our own girls that are you know in italy in turkey in france and so you know i'll jump on every morning and watch a few clips from all their games and just see what they're up to um, and then, you know, we have our open program. We see you guys there too in February. Uh, we'll have a spring training group with college girls in March. And then next thing you know, the girls come back. Yeah. So we'll, we'll take a little bit of time for ourselves and then just kind of get back on the grind and, you know, do our best to bring a gift to the team that we're better, you know, for next season. So it's, it's a busy time. But like I say, I think, I think everyone always asks like, are you guys okay? We're like, yeah, we're busy, but it, you know, no complaints. It's, it's all good stuff and um, trying to get better. Well, it helps like going back to what you said about just being around people who have the same passion mm -hmm, for the game yeah. and the passion for coaching. So it sounds like you have a really unique staff that you, know, you all come together and have that same focus, that same passion mm -hmm. and to bring that energy every day. Uh, and that helps. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really cool to like it'd be it'd be easy right to coach the national team and say okay like we've done it this way but i think we're like the first people to avoid that thinking and hey whether it's asking the athletes or each other or karch like how can we get a little bit better whether it's bringing sue enquist in um other experts peter vent you know it's it's asking those guys hey what do you see um what are the areas that we can kind of shore up and and ultimately it's 
it's just because we know those margins are so thin so uh, I, th I think we're we're all on the same page that way so it's pretty pretty cool to work with those people we got another volleyball stray volleyball <laughs> volley palooza remember that <laughs> i'm just kidding uh you so as a coach and i think you brought up a really good point earlier that you have a a knack or an aptitude for learning, you know, as a coach. And mm -hmm. I think that is a really good point to just bring up. Do you have any advice for, you know, new coach you're starting out? It could be the high school level, club level, middle school, just that new coach kind of stepping into this new space, um, uncharted land of, you know, just you don't know what you're going to get with your team. You don't know what sure. you're going to get with the program that you're, you know, kind of stepping into. What advice do you have for them take step, taking that step into that? new role for themselves yeah that's a great question i think the not the but one of the things that i would first do is just let's let's make sure like we're meeting the athletes where they're at and so if if you have enough experience where you can get that information you know how to get it then great and then let's make some plans let's um let's all get on the same page of how is this team going to run? What am I going to teach? What's the systems? What technique am I going to teach? I'm going to share it with the, the people that I need to know. You know, if you're working with kids, you, you got to talk to their parents. They got to know, like, what are you intending to do with this team? Um, show them your plan. Hey, I really care about athlete development. I really care about them as people. And this is what I'm going to do. And then I, I think if you, you need that help or you need resources, there's so many uh, good places to go you know we we did all our recordings for the coach academy and you know we obviously coach athletes at the highest level uh, i think we did a pretty good job sharing stuff that you could use for younger ages um and so being like really appropriate with that age group i think that would be like the first thing the the level and also the age uh because like i can i can walk into a 12 year old club teams practice and like i could be a, whatever a good coach but if i'm gonna coach them like a 20 year old like that's not gonna work ever yeah so i thought the first thing is like know where you are where where the athletes are and then hey let's let's get clear on the philosophy and then go from there uh, and share it with the necessary people make sure they're on board and, and and then the skills there's just a lot of resources for that part of it so uh, hopefully, yeah, just appropriate teaching, uh, appropriate drills, making sure you set up the gym the way it should be. Uh, the, it, there's a lot of things, as we all know as coaches, but, yeah, I would start there. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, wanted to get your thoughts on this because we're, we're here at ABCA, the convention, the ABCA convention, but the NCAAs are also going on. We had two great semifinal matches last night. Um, what are your thoughts on just the collegiate game, the women's collegiate game and, you know, where it's been even since when you were playing and, and how it's evolved and, uh, yeah, what excites you about the, the continued growth of the women's game? Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to see the physicality in the game. Um, it's what was really apparent to me is some of the different characteristics of the four teams. Yeah, and so yeah. I actually flew out to Austin to watch that regional, and so I'd, I'd seen Texas a bit, uh, and then a little bit less of the other teams. But it was the like cool part about volleyball is that when you get to this level, you know it. What it comes down to, especially in the tournament, is like how quickly can I pick that lock in this match, in this set, and then can I just stick with it? And so. What sometimes I see in college matches, and not talking necessarily about last night, but in general, is a team might start to pick a lock, meaning kind of attack a team, expose their weaknesses, um, find some rhythm, and they might find that, but they just can't sustain it. And so it's really cool to see when teams can do that, and then what are they doing to expose the other team? And I think. That part of it is really fun for me because these girls are all good, right? Yeah. And so, Very good. and especially <laughs> like for us, we, we have a pretty good pulse on, um, the players that are there. So for when I watch it, like when I watched last night, okay. Um, how is Texas or San Diego going to try to get each other off the net and out of system? 
and how are they going to defend out of system? How are how are they going to defend in system? And so those those are like the super fun parts. And then the beauty of volleyball is there's so many ways to play the game, and so you see different techniques, you see different tactics, and um, the ability to maintain that focus and execute it when you have a semifinal on the line or a, I guess final on the line. So uh, that's impressive to me, and. Yeah, it's. I think the the future is bright for the college girls, and the cool thing is when you watch them, it's like they just get after it, and and for sure, I'm sure some of them were nervous, and you know some of them had amazing nights last night on the court, and maybe some not so much, but that's like so much of sports, and so you you wanna like just appreciate that part and celebrate that because. We know that this is this feels like the biggest thing in their life right now, and to hold weight to that, you know, you don't want to discredit that. But it's like, dude, you guys, it's so great that you're here and, and you just are trying to do your best to win. So it's like, I don't know. I guess I look at it as kind of big picture, and then tactical things are like really fascinating to me. Yeah. How do you feel about all of these new and upcoming opportunities to? continue to play the game professionally like here in the states and mm -hmm. just through all these different leagues like you know literally you look around you see four or five new organizations around yeah. and uh it's uh, it's it's, it's got to be it's got to be a good feeling right just see all these opportunities out here to continue yeah. to play the game that like people want to play until they're at opens playing 70, 75, right? Like you want <laughs> yeah. to play this game your whole life. How do, you, sure. how, how do you feel about all these opportunities and all this stuff coming to, to the forefront now? Yeah, I, I, love, I love that you're asking that because it's a, it's a pretty cool time in volleyball, right? And so to see all these leagues, all these people that are like really passionate about it. And then the thing is they're all going about it in different ways. Mm-hmm. And so you have people that are like, well, what do you think about it? And I'm like, you know what? There's so many smarter people than me out there that are passionate about volleyball also. So like, go do your thing. And I guess with us on the national team, to have opportunities for these girls to stay in the country, amazing, right? And if you're talking about from a, like a high performance lens or like the most competitive league in the world, yeah, let's let's uh, maybe combine. But I, I think actually, if we're getting into like details, is I, I think some of them hope to work with each other so yeah. that they could get athletes playing in both, you know, mm -hmm. or more mm -hmm. than one, I should say. But um, to have passionate people spend their lives trying to give others an opportunity to play volleyball for a longer period of time, great. And of course, some of them are going to make money off of it, right? <laughs> but our girls our girls the girls are gonna make money also so um yeah it's super cool of course you you learn as you go and, and we get to learn a little bit about the leagues um here and there and and i actually got to coach in athletes unlimited the first yeah. season yeah mm -hmm. so that was super fun and and they were figuring things out and, and giving people some pretty cool opportunities to play so of course we were you know we were in a bubble in Dallas, and that was that year that they had that huge storm. I know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dallas gets some bad storms. Uh, I'm from Dallas uh, originally, oh. so I know all about oh, that. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that but was yeah, that was interesting for y'all. Yeah, there was like snow there. Uh -huh. Wait, it's snow here? in Dallas? Like, <laughs> yeah, geez, snow in Texas. She's Tama from Hawaii. <laughs> like get with it. But yeah, it's it's cool. Like you said, it's it's awesome, and uh, we'll figure it out as we go. And you know, we're, we're we want them to succeed. That's the thing. We want them to succeed. They're gonna go about it in the different ways, and like I said, like there's just smarter people than I. Like, so go for it. Yeah, you know, I, I can coach, um, and I'm gonna let the business people do the business stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's it's really cool. Like you said, a, a cool time for volleyball, a great yeah. time for volleyball, and uh, I'm excited to see what these uh, organizations can do, what these leagues can do, and and providing more opportunities for for volleyball to stay here in the states. Yeah, and um continue to give young athletes the opportunity to watch this high yeah, level volleyball too so yeah. and for the athletes to be able to stay with their families or you know have more flexibility to start families too which is awesome so 
I'm certainly excited. Um, they're going to learn and grow and figure it out. But um, mm -hmm. the the important thing is they're here, yeah. and it's gonna they're going to do it. They're going to do yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, Tom, I guess before we let you go, is there anything else you'd like to share or talk about? Um, anything about the convention? Maybe uh, just a push for people who aren't here, uh, maybe the, to get them excited about maybe wanting to come next year. Yeah. Something like that. You know, the, the cool thing about the convention is there's just a couple days packed with sessions. And so you have all types of people you know, coaches, experts in other areas sharing their knowledge. And you it's it's kind of like a accelerated class, I would say, a volleyball class. Yeah. And so, you know, we're we're about to walk into Karch um, sharing our top six on six drills with everyone. You know, we uh, Aaron and I uh, talked about feedback, such a big part of coaching. You have other national team uh, head coaches in this convention sharing the stuff that they do and then you have some high school coaches sharing and then you have a club meeting and then you have these um exhibits over here uh and so it, it's a pretty cool vibe and then you get to watch these girls compete so it, it's um it's really fun even though i like i said i'm a little antisocial, but it's <laughs> super fun and then um yeah it, you know this volleyball community we need to stay tight so yep yeah it's a small community but a tight community yeah uh, oh, yeah. And small but big too. Like mm -hmm. people feel like you look. We just saw Doug Beal walk by. Yeah. We He's had right over there. Actually. Daniel Scott walked yeah. by too. So you never know who you're gonna run into. Tama Miyashiro right here at the podcast center. Uh, you never know who you're gonna run into and who you're gonna be able to sit next to at lunch. Or Curtis Ward, you know, <laughs> Curtis Ward, our producer, yes. sitting out there. Yeah. So it's just a really cool environment. Our first time here, and I can yeah, just you know cool the guys. energy is really cool just to see everyone here wanting to get better. Yeah. Uh, and be better for, you know, their individual teams and their programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Where uh, can uh, where can people, people follow you on social media? Ooh, social media. My favorite thing. OK, um, I think. Well, I'm on Instagram and I think it's just my name. Tom Amishiro. Yep. I'm on Twitter. I think it's Tom underscore Miyashiro question mark. Something I mean, like that. there's I don't think there's that many Thomas because that's a unique name. And so, yeah, I. I think I do more looking than posting, but I'm trying to get better. And we all know that's today's world. Mm -hmm. So, um, but is yeah. It, is that a hint saying you're on TikTok too? <laughs> oh my God. No, I'm not cool enough for TikTok. <laughs> but really, I'm not cool enough for that. But yeah. Um, we heard, I think in the first session, maybe the pre convention session with you and Aaron. Aaron uh, mentioned to the coaches that were in attendance to, uh, if they're in Anaheim to stop by and, and watch a practice. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? and and you yeah. know the opportunity there for anyone who's in town yeah thanks guys <laughs> i didn't even remember that <laughs> open invite okay so anyone open listening um our practices are open in anaheim and if you want to come and watch um the name of our gym is open gym premiere just look it up we're next to disneyland and um there, there's so many usav emails up on the website just hit someone up they can help direct you um you know we're not like we don't really have secrets. And if there's anything we don't want to share, we're not going to do it in front of people. But our doors are always open. I think my my uh, goal and vision is that our practices were packed with people because there's so much um, volleyball in that area in, in our country. And there's always tournaments in Anaheim. So yeah. if you ever come to Anaheim to do something else, uh, maybe a club tournament, just stop by our gym and you get to see us work in action. And, you know, coming up, we've got some big work to do to qualify for Paris. So more than welcome. Um, and you know, we'll probably say hi to you too and, and uh, ask you what you think. So uh, open arms and um, yeah, stop by. Cool. Yeah, make a day of it. Go to Disneyland and watch a USA practice. Yeah, exactly. Can't get any better than that. Exactly. <laughs> Best day ever. Yeah, awesome. Tama, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us and no enjoy problem. the rest of the convention. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, guys, and good job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. That's it. That's a wrap. Okay. Pretty, pretty painless. Yeah. Let's do the outro right now. Oh. We're still on. We're doing the outro. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Oh yeah, you can go, Tama, if you want. If you need to. Thank you. If you need, need to. Snack, so. If you need to go ahead do another session. Thank you so much again for taking the time to sit down with us. You're welcome. Yeah. Taiba Hanif Park. Hi. Speaking of people, you're gonna. <laughs> oh, hello there. Wow. Good evening. Good evening. Speaking of people you're going to run into We're at the just convention. just greatness all the time. This is amazing. <laughs> we just finished. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing the outro right now, actually. Yeah. Never know who you're going to run into at the convention. That was Here amazing. ABCA in Omaha. All right, let's wrap <laughs> this thing up. Uh, thank you up. all for. Um, we got. I know we got a packed house here. Got a lot of people in the podcast center listening to. Um, I know. I'm sorry. You, you want us to keep going, but we got to wrap it up. But um, yeah, you can follow us on social media. You can email us if you ever want to. I don't know. Suggest an episode. Uh, hear something that we haven't really talked about yet at uh, the USAV show at USAV dot org. We got a lot more conventioning to do it here at ABCA. We just want to thank ABCA for allowing us to come in here and record our live-ish show here yeah. at the convention center. And it's, it's been a journey. It's been an amazing, and it's been an amazing, wow, look at that. It's been an amazing journey. <laughs> it's been a long day. It's That's been what it's been. Just, <laughs> a long gosh, week. It's been yeah. a very long day. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for being friends and associates of the podcast. Um, we've seen the growth. You know, every single episode that's dropped, every single person we've had on the show, we feel, we've, we've seen it, we feel the love come through, and we can't make this podcast happen without you guys. Yeah. And even if you don't listen to every single episode, don't have time to listen to every single episode when they drop, just open up your phone. Open up your phone, search the USA Volleyball Show, and subscribe. Or if you're walking Follow. by and see this pull-up banner <laughs> right here with um, some random guys' faces on it with a QR code on the bottom. You can literally scan that QR code and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And, for, and I think we're ready to wrap it up here. You're listening to the USA Volleyball Show, the official podcast of USA Volleyball. This has been the USA Volleyball Show with Clarence Hughes and Stephen Munson. Produced by Curtis Ward. Our content producer is Lara Fawcett. Our marketing lead is Bree Jaycox. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to rate and review. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the USA Volleyball Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts.